You're listening to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, aimed at helping photographers learn how to make the leap from amateur to pro. Hello and welcome to the Mind Your Own Business podcast, a joint effort brought to you by PhotoFocus and Skip Cohen University. This is Shamir Young and I'm joined by my co-host Skip Cohen. Skip, how are you? I'm doing great. I wanted to call you Man of the Year. That's a lofty title. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I, I like did it. get I did get from one of the Spanish magazines about twenty five years ago I was Ombre del Año. <laughs> <laughs> well that's legit and, right there. And I remember my ex wife saying, You may be Ombre del Año, but tomorrow's garbage day. Take out the trash tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's a very it was a very lofty title. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well thank you. Hey, oh, we yeah. have we have a great we have a great program today. And in fact this is our last podcast for 2021 and i don't know about everybody else but boy i'm ready to wrap this year up and get started on a new one um we've got we've got one of my most fun friends over the years and guests and you know i always kind of write out something that i want to say um kay eskridge is joining us and i didn't write out anything so this is just this is just straight off the top of my head She's based in Arizona. She is a return guest because we've done some podcasts with her in the past. But the bottom line is she is one of the most creative artists in the industry. And it's because she simply loves this stuff. And there's that old line about you can't create images that tug at people's heartstrings if your own heart isn't in it. Well, her heart is in it every single day. And this is really meant to be this podcast is kind of a sneak peek to a panel discussion of which uh, Kay Myron Fields and Allison Tyler Jones are going to join me on January 17th at IUSA. And we're going to talk about low hanging fruit uh, on the 17th, things that you could be doing to increase business and brand awareness. They don't happen by accident, but they aren't rocket science either. And I've said it several times over the last year that hunkering down is about your health. It's not about your business. So if you think about what's coming in the year ahead, what good is working to create the very best images of your life if nobody knows who you are? Or worse yet, you've let the stress of business in today's chaotic world sap your creativity. And if there's one thing Kay can do, and I've seen her do it over and over and over again in workshops and online and in things she talks about, and even a, even a fun phone call with her, um, she's able to get people fired up. She's able to get thinking of your creativity, and she does it with a complete open heart. There are no secrets. She's happy to share anything, good, bad, or indifferent, that's happened in her life to help you get better at your life. And with that note, that's not bad for something that a guy didn't write out. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) this is the cue for your lips to move. Welcome to Mind Your Own Business. Are you sure you're talking about me? (laughs) Oh, no, I'm sorry. (laughs) Check your notes, Skip. (laughs) I'm sorry, that was, I'm sorry. Is this Howard? Is this your husband, Howard? (laughs) Yes, we are talking about you. And we're talking about a great program coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, And Shamira, take it away. Okay, we are so excited to have you here and to have you back on the show again, in fact. Thank you. We had an amazing conversation with you before, and we're looking forward to doing it again. And, you know, just like last time, to refresh anyone's memory um, who maybe listened and needs some details, or for those who may not have heard about you Kind of give us a quick overview of your background, how you got started doing what you're doing and how you ended up doing photography today. Sure. Well, you know, it's kind of a tale that sometimes you hear a lot of people that have been around for a long time in the industry. I I don't like the word old timers because I don't feel that way. Mm. Um, I like uh, seasoned (laughs) (laughs) or so um, because I have been at it for 35 years now. I actually studied photojournalism up at college up at NAU started a one-hour film processing lab with my husband, started a studio from there, uh, went through a divorce, but continued the studio work, built a building. Um, I've had full three full-time employees at one point, and 
had just the biggest, the baddest, the most beautiful studio that that had been in Arizona. And I just, I had it all. And then also went through some challenges with my own personal life and have now made a very conscious decision to move my business to my residence. So I have a residential studio. I'm on about an acre. So I've cultivated a beautiful portrait garden in the front and the backyards, as well as a camera room inside and a large dressing suite. And the home is actually cordoned off to where the south wing is all the studio. You don't go through my front door or see any of my personal space. So it truly is the whole south wing of the house. And it's set up perfectly for this situation. So now I have no employees. It's myself. My wonderful husband helps out quite often. I'm still getting used to saying that because we've just been two months now that we were have been married. And I know Skip's jaw is just dropping to the floor. Nobody thought they'd hear that said again but um it's it's been you know something that i feel like i can share something with every single person that listens to my story i have worked with employees i've worked by myself i've worked with a husband i've worked with a divorced husband i, I don't know many people that have that on the resume but i have, have i'm equipped to share information of all facets of what professional photographers can do because i've been there and i've done that and I have answers because I found the answers myself, whether it's through, uh, you know, banging it out on my own and the hard knocks of, of dealing with life, or whether it's been I've listened to others before me that have given me great advice that I've been able to cultivate and change and massage to fit what my needs are. Whatever it is, it, I feel like I have, I have been able to navigate through this career in a way that not only has brought me much success and wonderful opportunities to travel, but really exciting opportunities to meet amazing people um, in our society. And knowing that I have the option and the opportunity to be that chosen photographer for families these days that really now are realizing the how important family portraits are to them, now, especially now with, unfortunately, all of the deaths that are occurring on, on our world, you know, we as the world's record keepers, it truly is a job that I take, not lightly at all, I take it very seriously, that it is up to us to maintain that level of professionalism when we are capturing these families, because it truly may be the last time that they're together with all of their families together. So, in a nutshell, I think I just feel like I've kind of been there, done that, and done it all. Uh, I've come through it. I'm loving my life. I enjoy a financially successful life. Uh, but more importantly, I love who I am as a result of the career that I've chosen. Wow. And it. that's it for today, everybody. Oh my I want goodness. to thank you for joining us on this podcast. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> You have no idea how many points you hit, and I'm sure that everybody that listens to this are going to are going to catch there. And it's, in fact, it's a great spot to go, which is one of your last points. Um, I'm going to set the stage, and then I just want you to talk about things that you've done um, to help you find the balance. Uh, because right now, I know that your focus is split between your love for your business. And more importantly, the love you have for your folks who are elderly, um, who have some serious health issues, who are in lockdown, a lot, have been in lockdown. And it's finding that balance. And at the same time, you mentioned that that I mean, one thing that came out of the whole pandemic is a very strong, renewed sense of family. So that family portraiture is stronger than ever, because if we learn nothing else over the last year and a half, it's that life is simply too short. So how have you been able to keep the balance between you and caring and your love for your mom and dad and then working on keeping aspects of your business still active? Well, it's, it seems to be a daily learning curve for me. I don't always do it right. I unfortunately have made some, some, some mistakes. But what I have learned is just making sure that my clients understand what my expectations are of my ability to do things for them. Um, that if 
you know, that if, if maybe I'm off by a day, I give myself a little bit wider berth of a gate. I don't guarantee a deadline. I'll say it will be available for you in two to three working days. However, just understand that there are some extenuating circumstances, not only with the lab and everything going on with manufacturing, but also within my own personal life and the fact that I'm my parents' caregiver. And I found that not only do people hear that and not only do they say, oh, that's certainly fine, but they'll say, what can I do? And Mm -hmm. I'm not telling, I'm not asking for help. I'm just asking for grace. And by letting them know in advance that that may be a challenge, I've never had to use that, but it does open up an opportunity for conversation and it humanitizes me just a little bit more in front of my clients. Most of them at this age in our lives are experiencing that. Um, You know, we are becoming our parents' parents. And it, I am. It's if it's not one, it's all of the people I talk to will either say I've gone through that, I'm going through that, and we exchange stories, or we exchange ideas, or we exchange things that we've gone through, and we share, and we're able to help one another just by opening up that that sense of common knowledge. So I think I I I don't utilize it as an excuse, but I've found that by being honest with my clients and letting them know that their expectations are now there's a monkey wrench thrown into that, and that is my life and my family will always come first. I will do the best that I can after that, but it still comes down to my family comes first. And if I have to reschedule a session because I have to take my mom to a pain pump specialist because it's come up all of a sudden. You know, that's what we've got. That's what we've got to do. Um, we had to spend Christmas between a glass yesterday because um, we couldn't be together because they're under quarantine. And there's five, no, nine cases of COVID in their assisted care facility. They've been inoculated and they've had their booster and they both had COVID. But I go to sleep every night on my knees just praying that they stay safe and that they, they get out of this. And, you know, I... There's so much unknown about COVID and the situation that we're under. But if I can control what I can control, that's all I can do. And controlling my my try to maintain my parents' happy attitude and maintaining their, uh, you know, they both have dementia. My dad is late stage and my mom has just started. And we are seeing it faster with my mom than with my dad. But knowing that you know, what I need to do to keep them happy, that's the most important thing I can do right now and to be there as often as I can. So sometimes it means just giving myself grace with my deadlines, with my clients and verbalizing that grace with them. That's all I can do. You know, that is such a great tip for everybody out there because you are under, everybody puts themselves under deadlines. We all, we all want instant fulfillment these days. We've all gotten used to the fact that if I I order at Amazon in the next three hours and 22 minutes. I'm going to have my package tomorrow morning. Yep. I love the fact that you're bringing in the human element and putting your clients in a position of you sharing. Hey, guys, here's what's going on in my life. I want to I want to do your portrait. I'm here for you. But instead of Monday, it might be Wednesday. I mean, it's not. I, I think people today, especially, um, because you're right, everybody understands it. Everybody um, has, if if they're a certain generation and they're not old enough to have parents that are going through this, they've got grandparents that are going through this. There's no family that hasn't been affected in some aspect by either, either the pandemic or just plain old aging. Yep. And I love being able to, the way you're sharing that, that gives that. That's a great tip on maintaining balance. Yeah. And it doesn't it, it doesn't mean you gotta pour your heart out with every client. No. You don't have <laughs> you don't have to overshare. <laughs> For yeah. sure. And you know some of them are gonna be like, I don't care, just get my stuff. But uh <laughs> I think the majority is just right from the very beginning. You know, and our labs found a way to let us know that during this time that things are gonna be running late. And so why can we not then use that? Why can we not take that lead from the lab and say, you know, we're just, we're over, you know, we're understaffed and there's just, it is what it is and we're doing the best we can. What can we prioritize to accommodate whatever the most important to you first? And then I think that gives them the knowledge to say, okay, well, this is more important than that. 
This is a try for Christmas. This is much sad by Christmas. And then figure it out from there. Then you're working with your client to create a plan instead of making it your client against you. You're working together. I love that element of transparency. Yeah. yeah. I think clients. so. Yeah. I think transparency just in general has been, um, yeah, everything, our, our world right now is so untransparent. Un mm. Not what it, what is that? Untransparent, maybe? Untransparent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, everybody seems to hide behind things, or hide lies, half truths, or just flat out um, make believe. And so I think the more clear and the more honest we are with our clients and ourselves, the better off we are. You know, that if you get yourself caught up in lies and you, you just kind of find yourself in a circular spiral that you can't get yourself out of. So if you just stay transparent and honest, then there's nothing that can go wrong from that. Love it. Love it. And I'm curious. So listening to you talk about the stresses that we are all going through, frankly, together with with our businesses, with the pandemic, um, how do you, how do I word this? Self-care is important. What action did you take for self-care for yourself, for preserving your sanity, especially as you balance your business and your family? Are there certain things you're doing to take care of yourself mentally or physically right now? Well, uh, probably going to have a mic drop here for people that are listening, but I have maintained sobriety. I'm coming up on two years of living a sober life here in another week. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> that is, that's Hello. wonderful. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Wow. no, no, that's what. I, oh, hey, that's you, huge. You've always been really open about everything in your life. And what I love about it is that you've always given opportunity, give, you've given people an opportunity to learn from your mistakes so they can make new ones on their own. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, so I it's, love it. It's been about a 10 year, maybe 12 year battle, but I, I feel I'm at a point where I, I say I am willing to come from out behind the, the bar and talk honestly and openly about my alcoholism, because I feel that if there's that one person that maybe just could use a phone conversation that they'll reach out to me because they're not alone. And it is it's the hardest fight of my life. I will tell you that it has been the hardest thing I've ever done. But my motto every day is that I choose all things over one thing. And that's what going through uh, recovery is all about. When you're in the middle of alcoholism, you're choosing one thing over all things. You're choosing your drink over everything else in your life. But when you're in recovery, you're choosing all things over one thing. I don't know if you can see that the shift, it's just a shift in mindset, but I choose my family and my clients, my life, my husband, my dogs. I choose all of them over the one thing of picking up a drink. And I didn't used to do that. I would allow that one drink to be my choice and all the rest of it just, you know, you stop caring at that point. So I think that's the difference between being in recovery and being an alcoholic is you understand the flip in mindset and that I carry that with me every day. So yeah, I have that on top of kind of everything else, um, but it's okay. I am doing it and I'm proud of it. And I think it gives me a different sense of empathy with some of the clients that I deal with and some of the photographers that I know in terms of giving grace and trying to help because you don't know anybody's backstory. I bet there are some people that never would have a billion years know that I was an alcoholic. There's some of you that would go, uh-huh, we knew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we knew. <laughs> but, um, I think that that's part of my mental health is keeping my sobriety strong, and I hold it dear and in my heart because I can't do anything without it. So for me, mental health means being sober. That is a mic track moment mic drop moment wow well i'm trying to figure out how to segue back into the business <laughs> and not make it sound like oh yeah okay great let's move on because uh, i don't want i don't want anybody to get that impression but no but i did just throw that at you surprise <laughs> okay but one of the things one of the things that that's come out of that and has come out of your sobriety is to me, when I look at the timing of all of this, and I didn't, 
I, I didn't realize until recently when you and I had a phone conversation a few months ago that, that that's part of what you were going through, um, as well as as well as what you were going with your parents and Howard's support and Howard coming into your life and all those things together has brought out some outrageous creativity, which to me it's sort of like in a way you were doing you were doing a lot of pet photography and cool things way back when. Um, but the reality is that remarkable pet portraits um, at a time when, and you said it just before we got started, everybody got COVID pets um, yeah. this last year and a half. I mean, Sheila and I got our two pups in November and by March, the pandemic hit. And if it hadn't been from the pups, um, we never would have kept our sanity. And they became a huge part of, I've got, we've got, we, there are two daughters, the two girls. Yeah. Yep. But when I went to get there, make the appointment for Sheila and I to get them in for their physical, my vet said, don't worry about getting their rabies shot or their tags for this, for Sarasota County. Um, we're running six months behind. So they were due that following November and we didn't get in until April or May or June. Yeah. to finally get in because so many people got pets. Yep. And share so a little too. share a little of the insight of what you've learned in creativity and pet photography because in the hierarchy of why people hire a photographer in the portrait social group, um, it's always been the same. Brides, babies, pets. Those were the top three that comes out of a study by Kodak 30, 40 years ago. And I don't believe it's really changed except Brides probably got bumped down during COVID just because of cancellations. Uh, babies bumped down a little bit because of concerned newborns, uh, mothers, and pets moved up. So still in the top three, and that's changing. Um, but talk a little bit about, I mean, what what's your best seller with pet photography? Well, I think it, it, it kind of is funny because I, one of the blessings of, of being sober is I'm a freaking rock star with my mind. I'm so much clearer and my ideas now make sense. <laughs> um, so I'm able to really drill down to find things that I feel not only passionate about, but that are truly money makers. And the idea of, you know, pet photography, like you said, has always been around. So we're not, we're not reinventing a wheel by any means. I just am bedazzling it or, or boat or, you know, tie dyeing it is what I'm trying to do and create a, an opportunity for pets, parents to not only have nice pet portraits, but also crazy, funny, silly, cartoonish, um, really wacky, different, silly opportunities to make them laugh, make them smile. So everything from a beautiful portrait of them outdoors being a dog but even if they want to dress them up and put a wig on them, I'll go as far down that train track as the client wants to go. And it has been not only the breath of fresh air for myself, but it gives me then an opportunity to showcase and put the word out that I'm doing these unique things. So it's not just I'm doing photography, pet photography. I'm doing unique pet photography and things that other people aren't doing. That's how I've been able to very much easy the the share um, through the community is easier because it's unique pet photography. It's not just pet photography. It's like what makes your high school senior photography unique, right? Well, what makes your pet photography unique? Finding the niche, finding the idea that fits for you. And I'll tell you, you know, if you're not a goofy put a wig on a dog kind of person, don't try to be that person because it's not going to work. For me, I've been dressing my pit bull for years now. And so to put a wig on a dog is just, you know, Tuesday. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's one of the things that I, I believe that whatever my, my biggest advice to any photographer would be, once you decide what you find your niche, don't go full on until you test the waters, but test the waters. And if it feels right for you and you, you've worked a little bit and it feels like it's a good direction, then go full on and then give it your all. And you'll find it gives you such a sense of satisfaction because then you're making a name for yourself. And it doesn't just have to be pets. It could be teenagers. Uh, we were ramping that up and then COVID hit. So the portrait parties kind of slowed back down again. 
uh, I was getting ready to ramp it back up again, and now we're going back down again. So I think the key and the beauty about pets is that it's kind of COVID uh, unfriendly. If you could meet the pet parent in a park, you could do it if you have an outdoor studio, you can go to their house, you can go to a park, you can go to the the, uh, the mountains, the, the desert. So you're not very close to them. It is a very COVID safe type of experience. Um, and it, it, the growing market is there. People are rescuing pets in untold numbers. The scary thing, and this is what I've been, had this information shared with me by one of the local uh, no-kill shelters. It's that they're afraid, you know, parents are getting the, the pets for their dogs and keeping them busy when the kids are at home. But when they go back to school, the dogs are left behind and the parents then have to care for the dogs. So they don't know what percentage will be rehomed or will be coming back. They're a little bit worried about that. But right now, COVID numbers are back up again. We may be shut back down again. The, the COVID pets may go back up again. It's hard to know. I just think that we as photographers should take a look at that trend and get smart about it and move to where that trend takes us. Okay, you mm -hmm. kind of beat me to the punch. I love it. My next question, you answered it. Um, already, but I'm just going to kind of poke at it a little bit more because I love how your pet portraits are such that you can do them even during COVID with social distancing and safety precautions. And, you know, I was going to ask you, what does the typical process look like when you're doing a pet portrait with a client as far as keeping uh, them safe? I know you mentioned the park, being outside, outdoors, where you don't have to be very close to them. Um, as far as putting your clients at ease, is there anything else that you do just to kind of make them feel more comfortable? Well, immediately, the first question I have for any of my clients is um, I start off by saying, just so you know, I've been inoculated mm -hmm. and I have my booster. Mm -hmm. I, at that point, they will usually say I have or I have it. I don't point blank ask because I that makes me that's just my personal Everybody may feel differently about it. It makes me, um, it makes me, um, how can I say this? Like I'm a little bit invading their space. If they give up that information, great. If they don't, I will say to them then, do you want me to wear a mask? Then if they do, I will. Now that's of right now. A week from now, two weeks from now, let's have that conversation again. And if the numbers are spiking again, I may point blank ask them. Uh, but I have the outdoor portrait garden. So I'm staying six feet away from the client is easy to do. And I'm not worrying about trans, you know, getting anything from the dog or giving anything to the dog. So I'm able to bring my masks down. When you think about it too, some of these dogs are fearful of masks. You know, what is a mask? They can't really see your mouth, your face. It can be very unnerving, just like for a small child, masks can be very scary. So my preference is to be maskless outdoors when we're working with the pet and commanding them. And then at that point, it would be whether the owner chooses to stay masked or not. But it is a conversation we have prior to them arriving. I never thought about that. That's such a good point. The masks affecting the pets. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, fearful. absolutely. Wow. You know, and, if, and you know what's really crazy if you think about it? The age right now, kids are born up to one and two since COVID's been two years. The majority of kids now haven't seen humans without masks. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that a weird wow. thought? Wow. Yeah. They know their parents, but most That's parents wild. won't their kids out without masks or, or won't allow people without seeing with the masks. So, yeah, it, it's not a weird thought. So, I, you know, yeah, I, same thing. When I, a lot of people know about Molly, the wonder dog, I wrote about her a lot and I had a broken heart when I, when she died and everybody that's ever had a pet knows what it's like when you lose your pet, but going back about, oh my God, it's probably 15 years ago or more. Uh, Molly was amazing. And I wanted to get her on the doggy brigade. When you walk into Akron children's hospital, uh, which is where Sheila and I were living at the time. Uh, instead of pictures of every past, you know, director and president of the hospital since, you know, who knows, 1895, there are pictures of every dog that's been in the dog brigade because it is a children's hospital. And I remember taking Molly for her, for her audition. 
she passed every single thing. I mean, as the dog is sitting there, they drop a, tr- a, a bunch of pots and pans on the floor. I mean, to see if they get startled, how they react. She passed every test <laughs> until a nurse came in with a mask on. Oh. And then she just disappeared. She cowered oh. behind me. And this is a 62-pound Labradoodle. She wasn't a small dog, and she was, but she was pretty courageous and friendly. But the issue of the mask, she 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 couldn't be a, a a part of the doggy brigade because you've got kids with compromised immune systems that are in a hospital and everybody is wearing a mask. And when yeah. you brought that up just now, um, it may it just took me right back to that. Wow. Um, but there's another piece of something you brought up right now that everybody needs to remember too, and. Um, All three of us know and have talked with Kim and Beverly Walden. Uh, Kim and Beverly Walden, when they teach, they talk about the importance of making the session memorable for the client. So in this case, yes, it's it's the dog or cat. It's the pet that's the star performer. But it's also making it fun. And it's about the experience of working with you you're not just you're not just selling a five by seven or eight by ten or or something larger in a in 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 a canvas print or a metal print or whatever. You're selling an experience. And it's that experience of working with you that people get excited and then tell your friend, Oh, you gotta get your pet photograph. You gotta go to K <laughs> and and just trust her. She's putting sneakers and a wig on your dog and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> And that's, but that's such a key ingredient that everybody needs to remember. And it goes back to what I said in my intro. You can't create pictures that tug at people's heart if your own heart isn't in it. So it's whatever it takes to get that passion, to get that fire going that people relate to when they suddenly come work with you. Right. Tis true. Tis very true. You know, and I think that the more, the more fun you can make a session for yourself. It is just going to be more fun for the client because, you know, we can't put in the kind of hours each day we all put into, if you're not loving what you're doing, if you're not loving what you're doing, you should find something else to do. There you go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And wow. It's our time is already running. down. I hate it. (laughs) But remember, these are meant to be, um, this is a, this is a teaser. This is a short post, everybody. And, <laughs> Do we need yeah. the music in the background? And should I be throwing things at you? <laughs> there it is. But just think about the just think about the fact, everybody, that if you're headed to IUSA, make it a point. This is an yeah. infomercial. Yeah. Um, the same a shameless self promotion. Come by. Come by and join us um, on the seventeenth. Uh, that evening, at, I think it's at five o'clock, uh, between Kay and Allison and Myron, uh, you have three of the most positive photographers that I have ever worked with that all have ideas. And we're going to be sharing low hanging fruits. So there's stuff that you're going to be able to leave with from that program and take home and apply to your business right then and there. And Shamara, you've got a favorite last question all the time. I sure do. And it's always a packed question too, a loaded question given these interesting times. Um, Kay, for any photographers or creatives who are just starting out right now, what advice would you give them to gain traction on their business? Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Um, That anybody starting a business right now, you are doubly challenged, triply, I'm not even speaking well right now, but my point being, it's hard enough just to start a business, but to start a business under these circumstances, it's quadruply more difficult. And so first I commend you. I tell you, don't give up. And I tell you, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to stumble. All you got to do is just just shake it off, just seriously shake it off and just try again. It's taken 35 years to get where I am. I, not, not everything I tried each time was a, a, a win. And you just got to brush it off and you just got to put your head down and just keep just keep trying. Just don't give up. Just keep trying. 
And by the way, speaking of not giving up, there's a line that, I don't know, Vince Lombardi gets credit for, Ross Perot gets credit for it. The line is simply so many people give up when they're one foot from a touchdown. So when you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I'm just, I can't make this work, um, go back to thinking about what got you into this crazy business in the first place and your love for it. No, I said that, Skip. That was my quote. Oh, that was yours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, that was that was, Skip. That was that Kay. Was in fact, yes. um, not Kay Vince, is responsible for a lot of what Vince Lombardi did in football. But for those exactly. of you that don't know how, how <laughs> old Kay really might be. He called, he called me all the time and asked me for help. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad we cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow oh. I'm trying to picture you and Ross Perot going out um, for dinner. I can't do it. No, I he, gets, he gets credit for it all the time too. Yeah, well, no. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. I love it. I love it. And Kay, I want to make sure and ask where can folks find you online to check out your work? Um, the studio is imagesbyk.com, and there's a drop-down menu for remarkable pet portraits. It's all right there. Perfect. And we will make sure to include that in the show notes. And Skip, where can folks find you? It's always the same answer. Everything I write is at skipcohenuniversity.com. I'm also on Skip Cohen on Facebook and Skip Cohen on Twitter. And my email is skip at mei and the number 500.com. And if you've got any ideas or thoughts as we go into a new year, uh, let's, let's get to me. Get to Shamira. Uh, let us know what, who, if there are any guests, if there are any topics you'd like us to hit. Um, we're really looking forward to a new year ahead. And uh, this is a good time for me to just remind everybody to have a terrific New Year's and stay safe and healthy. And Shamira, as I always ask again, where are they going to go to find you? Yes, folks can send me an email at shamira at photofocus.com. That is my first name, C-H-A-M-I-R-A at photofocus.com. We love getting questions, ideas, feedback, especially as we move forward into 2022. I also want to make sure and wish everyone a wonderful, healthy, fantastic new year. And we're just excited about this show and the amazing guests that we have the pleasure and honor of speaking to. And Kay, that includes you. Thank you so much. This was oh, awesome. Oh, you're welcome, buddies. I look forward to 2022. It's going to be a good year. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great one. And we want to thank our listeners for joining us. Please tell your friends about this podcast, especially if they want to improve their photography businesses and bring them up to the next level. We look forward to having you all with us next time on the Mind Your Own Business podcast, brought to you by Photo Focus and Skip Cohen University.